Sheikh Minanen with the news from Bahrain Television. Good evening. The Royal Court announced that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa is leaving Bahrain tomorrow, Wednesday, to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, leading Bahrain's delegation to the 36th session of the Supreme Council for the GCC, which Saudi Arabia is hosting on the 9th and 10th of December. The Saudi capital Riyadh is bracing itself to host the 36th GCC summit, which is due to kick off tomorrow. The summit comes at a time of continued violent challenges facing the region and the world as a whole. Their Excellencies, the foreign ministers of the GCC convened last night to finalize the agenda. The city has beefed up security ahead of the leader's arrival tomorrow as the different media delegations arrived to cover the event. The buzzing media center was filled with speculation as to what would top the summit's agenda this year. Our aim is to reinforce our GCC unity and showcase our cooperation. The summit comes as a rejection to any interference in our affairs or our freedoms. This summit, the 36th since the establishment of the GCC in 1981, is expected to address grave security concerns, including the rise of Daesh and its terrorist attacks around the globe. The Yemeni situation is also expected to make the agenda, along with the ongoing Syrian crisis now in its fifth year. Riyadh is concurrently hosting a summit for the representatives of the Syrian opposition to reach a political solution to the conflict with the backing of the GCC leaders. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is keen on uniting the Gulf, the Arabs and the Islamic nations. Syria is an Arabic country and having the legitimate members of the opposition here would help reach a solution and show support of the Gulf nations. The GCC's achievements in various fields in the name of unity are countless. And with this summit, like its predecessors, the people of the Gulf are looking for these ties to be reinforced and translated into tangible joint ventures. Another summit that brings together the Majesties and Highnesses, the leaders of the GCC countries, to reach a resolution to the pressing geopolitical and social issues affecting the region. Hamid Shaban, Bahrain Television News, Riyadh. His Majesty the King received that Sakhir Palace today in the attendance of Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, participants, heads of sessions and speakers of the international conference titled Women in Public Life from Policymaking to Influential Impact, which is organized by the SCW in cooperation with the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. His Majesty affirmed that the Kingdom has taken leading steps in order to support Bahraini women in various fields. He hails such conference, which, come at, as, which comes as an international recognition for women's participation in the development march, thanks to the efforts exerted by Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa and her keenness to support Bahraini women on all levels. His Majesty directed to benefit from the outcomes of the conference and to enhance cooperation and coordination with countries and international institutions. He expressed pride in Bahraini women's major role played on various levels and affirmed his support to all efforts exerted by Bahraini women in the development march of the kingdom as women participated in the municipal elections since 1923, entered the field of education since 28 and participated in the judicial authority and have membership in the constitutional court. His Majesty expressed keenness to further support the works of the Supreme Council for Women and expressed his appreciation for the Council regarding its efforts in maintaining women's rights in cooperation with state institutions. He hailed the Council's commitment to implement plans and strategies that aim to maintain the constant attendance of women in various fields. He expressed congratulations to the UAE regarding electing Dr. Amal al qubaisi as a speaker of the UAE Federal National Council, which proves Emirati women's ability to reach higher positions, noting Bahraini women's efficiency in the National Development March. His Majesty wished all participants success regarding all efforts that aim to empower women as to achieve a more stable and prosperous world.
الحمد لله نعتز ونفخر بجهود خواتنا وبناتنا في مختلف الدين الأصعد في العمل في الميدان وفي المكاتب في المزارات وفي القضاء وفي السياسة على كل حال بالنسبة إلى بلدكم البحرين دور المرء ما كان متوقع يعني أنا بالنسبة لي من فتح وأنا أشوف المرأة العمل تعمل مع الرجل في كل مجال لكن اليوم قمنا بتشجيع أكثر بحيث أن نوجه أن لا تركزون بس على أمور منزلية أو أعمال منزلية ركزوا على أمور أكبر بالفعل لما نعرف في صور أن المرأة بدأت انتخابات البلدية في البحرين 1923 يعني أنا هذا اللي عرفته أذكر حتى كثير من دول العالم الغربي والشرقي ما بدا هذا بل يمكن يمكن ان احنا بدانا في نفس السنه مع بريطانيا ذاك الوقت اللي هو 1923 كذلك الخريجات الجامعيات واللي يعني قاموا بالواجب وقاموا بالعمل التطوعي كانوا في, في كل في الأنشطة وفي المدارس المستشفيات الحكومة فبالفعل عايشين كأسرة واحدة وكلها تعمل ومن قال أن المرأة في عالمنا العربي ما كانت تعمل المرأة في عالمنا العربي عملت في الحقول وفي الزراعة وفي الإدارة وحتى الحروب شاركت من قديم تجلس في المجلس وتقلق الضيوف وترحب بالناس وتشارك الأفراح والأتراح مجتمعها مثل ما قلت واليوم فقط مسألة تنظيمية تنظم العمل بالنسبة للمرأة وتشجع على طولها الأسواق المختلفة والدكاكين المختلفة الحمد لله احنا نهني دولة الإمارات بفوز المرأة برئاسة المجلس وهذا الحقيقة دليل أن لولا احترام الرجل للمرأة ما وصلت إلى هالمواصل والرجال هناك الرجال يعني معروفين ولكن هذا الاختلاط متفاهمين عليه من مئات السنين ما هو وليد اليوم وأنا في البحرين في الواقع ما تكون غلطان على احد. احنا رفضنا ان تكون عندنا كوتا للمراه في المجالس. احنا في الواقع نشوف منافسه المراه قويه ما تحتاج الى كوتا. يعني بتاخذ الكراسي بذراعها 100% فلذلك ما كان في حاجه ان نسوي كوتا لل للمرأة أن تدخل المجلس النيابي. بالفعل لما ننظر إلى نتائج بناتنا في المدارس متفوقات. يعني هذا ال 70% أو 75% هذا صار في الماضي هم من الثمانين وفوق 
ويدرسون ويجتهدون والحمد لله سمعتهم طيبة في كل عمل ف ما في مهمة صعبة على دور المرأة وال النسب أنا مو بخبير نسب يعني ما عندي معلومات وتابعها لكن أشوف شوف عين أن المرأة متوازنة وموجودة في كل محفل في الحفلات موجودة وفي الوزارات موجودة وفي الدوائر موجودة وفي المصانع موجودة وفي الطيران احنا عندنا نساء يطيرون وخذوا بعد يعني درجة القيادة وهكذا لا شك زيارتكم اليوم حديثكم في شؤون المرأة هو دفعة قوية للمرأة والرجل أعتقد الرجل بي بيلاحظ نفسه ولازم يلاحظ نفسه أن إسباق مو بسيط والمنافسة قوية وهذا المستوى المطلوب فالمرأة يعني إحنا نتمنى أن تتجه لهذه الأعمال هذه الحقول بالثقة هذه وهي مسألة ثقة فقط ما لا أكثر ولا أكثر وفي القضاء كذلك في البحرين في بلدكم دخلت المرأة القضاء المحاماة من زمان أنا أعتقد البحث في القضايا عند المرأة القاضي أدق من كثير من القضاء حسب ما تابعنا وأعتقد وصلت عندنا قاضية إلى المحكمة الدستورية هذا على المناصب الحقيقة في القضاء والمحكمة الدستورية محكمة مستقلة تماما تفتي تحكم في أمور الدستور والحياة عموما لأن إذا قالت هذا غير دستوري هذا النشاط يتوقف وإذا قالت دستوري يستمر فإحنا الحقيقة فخورين بناتنا فخورين أخواتنا فخورين أمهاتنا والقراءة والكتابة طبعا ما هو فخر إحنا عددنا قليل كشعب فالحمد لله يعني مسألة الأمية لا توجد His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Palace in the attendance of his personal representative, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Royal Guard Commander Brigadier General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a number of officers who came back from Yemen after performing their national duty in line with the BDF's participation in the Joint Arab Coalition in Yemen in the presence of BDF Chief of Staff. His Majesty presented the officers with honorary medals in recognition for their dedication in performing the national duty and for their keenness to present an honorable image of the kingdom. He expressed pride in the BDF's participation in the operation's decisive storm and restoring hope in Yemen. His Majesty also expressed appreciation to the UN Special Envoy for Yemen, Ismail Wald Sheikh Ahmed, for his efforts that aim to achieve a peaceful solution and maintain security and stability in Yemen.
His Majesty the King received at Sukhir Palace today the Thai princess and businesswoman Raja Darasri Zhuyan Kura, currently on a visit to Bahrain. His Majesty highlighted the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and Thailand, commending the Thai princess's visit to, to view the developments of the kingdom in the field of economy and development. For her part, the princess valued His Majesty the King's care for developing bilateral relations and hailed the high living standards of Bahrain. She also expressed pleasure in visiting the kingdom to understand its potentials and achievements in all fields, wishing Bahrain for the progress and prosperity. In an interview with Saudi Al Riyadh newspaper on the occasion of the 36th GCC summit hosted by Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa emphasized that the current circumstances under which the Riyadh summit is being held earn its special importance due to the rich agenda of topics aimed at promoting joint GCC action and addressing the ongoing developments and their economic, security, and political implications for the region. The Prime Minister stressed the stances of the custodian of the the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, in supporting Arab and Islamic issues and of right and justice forming a solid foundation which contributed to maintaining the security and stability of the countries and peoples of the region and its ability to survive in the face of various challenges. He asserted that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, has made further strengthening GCC joint action a priority on the agenda of its topics and strategies out of the belief in the shared GCC member states' purposes in terms of unity and destiny. His Royal Highness stressed that security must be a priority to any other goal as security and stability are key access to continue the process of development and the GCC countries should further increase bilateral cooperation and coordination in a way that would enhance their capabilities to be more powerful to confront all attended divisions plots which the GCC are meant to get involved in. He urged to increase efforts to overcome the current economic situation due to the drop of oil prices and reiterated that the Gulf Union is a strategic choice in a world that recognizes only blocks, saying that the Union not only provides a powerful and cohesive umbrella that strengthens collective security, but would also form a giant economic entity that would provide necessary needs to achieve the hopes of the peoples of the GCC in prosperity and well-being requirements. The Premier praised the fraternal relations between both kingdoms and their shared history and destiny. He noted the important role played by Saudi Arabia in promoting the GCC march for the interests of the Arab Gulf states on all levels. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also received at Kudaybiyah Palace today intellectuals, journalists, senior state officials and dignitaries and scores of citizens. The Prime Minister said history marks that Bahrain is being targeted in the region to drag it into a state of chaos and instability. He highlighted the support and awareness of the people of Bahrain who fail such evil attempts and overcome such conspiracy to protect national unity. His Royal Highness confirmed Bahrain's strength thanks to the wise leadership of His Majesty the King and the cohesion of its people. He expressed concern regarding the tension and conflict in the region, which aim to divert attention from the most important issue, which is the Palestinian cause that will remain the first issue for Arabs and Muslims. He stressed the importance of caution in dealing with regional developments which aim to hinder development and progress. In regards to the upcoming GCC summit in Saudi Arabia tomorrow, the Prime Minister wished GCC countries lead a success and aspired that the Gulf Union is chief for further Gulf development. The Prime Minister hailed the pioneering role of journalists, is reflecting the needs of the society and deal with its issues, pointing out that media is influential and confirmed respect for different views. He expressed pride in journalism and writers for their visions and thanked them for their efforts.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Gudaybiya Palace the President of the International Federation for Equestrian Sports, Ingmar Devos. He congratulated His Majesty the King on receiving the FEI Leadership Medal on appreciation to his efforts to improve the equestrian sport, lauding Bahrain's progress in this field thanks to the support of His Majesty and his continuous efforts to achieve further progress regionally and internationally. He said that this sport is part of the Bahraini heritage and lauded the role of the the FEI president in developing the equestrian sport in Bahrain for it to be recognized internationally and combine various countries participating in this sport to achieve further cooperation and progress in this field. The FEI president expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness and his efforts to improve the equestrian sport, affirming Bahrain's progress in this sport on the regional and international level. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired at Gudaybiya Palace today the Executive Committee meeting during which he was presented the final report of the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs Government Task Forces to reduce recurring expenses. His Royal Highness commended the commitment of the teams through bringing forward their suggestions and recommendations in addition to the mechanism of implementation. He said the report included short and long term initiatives to achieve savings up to 30 percent which confirms the government's commitment to start with itself to responsibly deal with economic changes her Royal Highness wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, patronized today the opening of the international conference titled Women in Public Life, From Policy Making to Influential Impact, which is organized by the SCW in cooperation with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. SCW Secretary General highlighted the efforts of Bahrain to adopt the approach of influential impact in its national strategy to develop the status of Bahraini women by integrating them in both public and private sectors, in addition to civil society institutions. She added that the Council is following the follow-up and constant evaluation approach to monitor the level of social awareness of the rising presence of women. The focus of the conference is highlighting the efforts of the region with regard to women's participation in public life. This conference will take stock on the progress in implementing the regional recommendations to strengthen gender equality in public life, included in the OECD CAWTAR report, Women in Public Life, Gender, Law and Policy in the Middle East and North Africa. The three-day conference is discussing several issues, most notably promoting women's participation in public life for inclusive economic policies and equal opportunities in the private sector, promoting equal opportunities in parliamentary practices and the role of civil society institutions, in addition to building accountability for strategy to impact.
we are delighted to have this conference in Bahrain. Um, our relationship as Supreme Council for Women with the OECD is uh, very close and we are working on um, a scientific report that has been published in 2014 uh, that focuses on uh, gaps between men and women in the MENA region. So today we are doing a follow-up for that report and uh, we are hosting it here in Bahrain uh, in the presence of uh, many uh, officials, uh, parliamentarians, uh, NGO members and uh, uh, officials from the from UN entities. The quantity and caliber of participants in the Women in Public Life conference indicates the significance of the issue at hand, that being women's full engagement in all aspects of public life for the sake of progress on all fronts. The fact that the three-day event has drawn men and women from myriad private and public institutions and from around the globe demonstrates that leveraging all demographics to contribute to society is the goal of people in all nations of all regions of the world. Although each country has its own successes and challenges relating to the women's movement, the SCW and OECD have brought together key policy shapers in order to establish their criteria and benchmarks that will measure standards internationally. Bahrain was an obvious place to host this conference due to its impressive legacy of women's empowerment and ongoing efforts towards equality in all sectors and at all levels. We are in Bahrain not leaving the issue of women for, for, for chance. We are trying to control it within um, certain strategies and by, by devising um, uh, detailed action plans. And I think you've heard that the government of Bahrain is trying its best to mainstream the national uh, strategy and, and their, in, in their programs. So uh, this is an excellent move and the OECD has complemented uh, this initiative uh, uh, done by the Bahraini government. Uh, certainly Bahrain has made um, a lot of progress. Um, uh, we did notice in our report that uh, particularly when it comes uh, to the uh, participation of women in senior positions uh, in the government, uh, it's uh, uh, one of the leading countries uh, in the region. And I I would say in the world as well. Um, uh, however, of course, uh, there are still many areas uh, that would need to be improved uh, when it comes to the economic participation, when it comes to the overall empowerment. Uh, we also see uh, a number of uh, other barriers related uh, to the social image of women, uh, the legal aspects uh, that would need to be addressed, uh, including uh, Bahrain's relationship with uh, the um, uh, international conventions. Uh, so, so some of these things uh, uh, still are the areas where Bahrain may consider uh, taking steps forward and of course the OECD would be happy to support Bahrain in this journey. This conference is about much more than talking about issues and visions. It's about actually moving to the stage of the women's movement where we measure and build upon tangible outcomes. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Today met the speakers and guests of International Conference Women in Public Life from Policy Making to Influential Impact in association with the OECD. Her Royal Highness thanked OECD for its confidence in the Kingdom, represented by SCW, to host such an important event to exchange views and experiences in regards to integrating women's needs and empowering women in public life. She says such international conferences reinforce the status of Bahrain as a pioneer in the fields of supporting and empowering women regionally. The audience, meanwhile, thanked Her Royal Highness for Bahrain's ongoing efforts to support and empower Bahraini women, considering the event an added value to the Kingdom's reputation of hosting high-level international events. Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa, chair the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs meeting in the attendance of the Deputy Chairman of the Council, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, in which the Council expressed congratulations to Bahrain's leadership and people on the advent of Bahrain's National Day, His Majesty the King's accession to the throne, and the Martyrs Day. The Council hailed His Majesty's remarkable support to all activities related to the Holy Quran. It expressed its appreciation for the Bahraini youth who achieved the first place in the Quran and hadith contest in Qatar. 
His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Head of Bahrain Olympic Committee and Honorary President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Races Union, met today with the President of the International Federation for Equestrian Sports. His Highness loaded the role of the FEI present in developing the equestrian sports internationally and stressed Bahrain's keenness to enhance cooperation with the FEI in achieving further progress in this field. He stressed a brief keenness to develop this sport on the international level, affirming that the strategy to improve this sport will help make more achievements in the future. The FEI president expressed appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for his efforts to improve the equestrian sport, affirming that Bahrain's development in this sport is being recognized internationally. He wished His Highness further success in this sport. Under the directives of His Majesty the King's Representative for Charity Work, Youth Affairs, Supreme Council for Youth and Sports Chairman, and the Bahrain Olympic Committee President, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Bahrain will hold the Falcon Championship in January 2016, following last year's success. The third Falcon Championship comes after His Majesty's keenness to support Bahrain's heritage and tradition and to show pride in supporting historical heritage sports. His Highness Sheikh Nasser added that this sport gains lots of popularity popularity with the heritage value it represents and as a sport of Bahrain's ancestors that should be fully supported, enhance its presence and be a source of pride for the next generations. He said the registration for the championship will be from the 10th to the 25th of December. The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the Bahrain Athletic Association, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, arrived yesterday at the U.S. city of Las Vegas to attend the finals of the UFC TUF 22, set to be held on the 11th of December at the Chelsea Hall in the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas. His Highness went to the U.S. to support the KHK MMA fighter Frankie Edgar. His Highness attended the training session yesterday undertaken by professional MMA fighter Edgar in his fight with U.S. contestant Chad Mendes. Yeah, Sheikh Khaled's support was unbelievable. Um, this camp, like I said, it was, it was exceptionally well, and, and I attribute that to, to Sheikh Khaled and, and Team KHK. Um, you know, it, it's the little things that uh, that he provides for us, and, and, and the support we get from from everybody on the team is, is amazing. It's going to be it's going to be a great match, man. Uh, Frankie, you know, we believe he's the best in the world, and and overdue for a title shot. And he's going against uh, Chad Mendez. He's definitely one of the best uh, guys also in the world. So it should be an amazing fight. Uh, we really appreciate the Prince has been amazing, you know, to the whole team. And you know, we're we're so uh, blessed that we're you know we could be we could be called to be part of his team. The Speaker of the Representative Council chaired the weekly meeting and the Council approved a report by the Economic and Financial Affairs Committee regarding the issuance of development bonds, lowering the amount of public debt, diversification of income sources and coping with economic development faced by Bahrain and the region. The Council also approved a report regarding increase of pensioners and beneficiaries subject to social insurance law, retirement benefits for officers and members of the BDF and general security and retirement benefits for for government employees. The Council then discussed a report by the Public Utilities Commission Committee regarding the establishment of a marine coast uh, port for fishermen in Hamala area and discussed another report by the same committee regarding allocating the land of the Youth Creativity Center of the Goys for Housing projects and provide the organization with another location. The Council approved a report also by the Public Utilities Commission Committee regarding creating a bridge at the intersection of El Fatah Avenue, another at the intersection of Najma Club and El Fatah Avenue, and another at the intersection of the Gulf Hotel and Umm Al Hassan. The Secretary General of the Representative Council, Abdullah Dosari, and Acting Director of Bahrain News Agency, 
signed today a memorandum of understanding between the Representative Council and the Information Affairs Authority in the presence of the Speaker of Representative Council Ahmed Al Mullah and Minister of Information and Parliament Affairs Ais Al Hamadi. The agreement comes under the reform project and the vision of His Majesty the King in the framework of cooperation between the Legislative and Executive Authority to publish the work and efforts of the Representative Council to the public opinion. Mr. Dosery said that this agreement comes under the directives of the Representative Speaker loading the cooperation between the Council and the Government. He also said that the agreement will provide several projects, TV and radio programs regarding the work of the Representative Council over the year according to the plan of the ministry. He expressed appreciation to the information minister in his efforts to support the council under the reform project of His Majesty the King. In line with the celebration of Bahrain Women's Day themed women in the financial and banking sector, Bahrain Bourse, in cooperation with Bahrain Institute of Banking and Finance, organized a workshop on Sunday on the fundamentals of investing. The workshop, supported by Tam Keen, was attended by Bahrain Business Women's Society members and some of the students taking part in Bahrain Bourse's TradeQuest program. Fifty members of the society attended the workshop that was conducted by specialists from BIBF's faculty. The workshop highlighted the importance of saving and investment and discussed the different investment products available for investors in Bahrain in detail. It highlighted the concepts of risk and return and educated the participants on how to build their investment portfolios, concluding with trading at BHB and the stock selection process.